When we praise God, we are recognizing His divine mind and His divine provision. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Rod Hembry. I'm Janice. And this is Bible Discovery TV. Today we are discovering Psalm 65, a great day to join us. And so we thank you. We're going through the Bible from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. It's very interesting. Corey and Ryan are here. Corey, what's going on? Well, today, Mom and I are going to be spicing things up. We're blending our segments together, and we're going to have a little bit of a discussion, a roundtable. How about you, Ryan? Well, today I'm looking at the life of the primary writer of the Psalms, King David. All right, we'll look for that, and that's going to be interesting as we discuss this later on. Mm -hmm. You're looking forward to that, too. I am indeed. All right, so get out your Bible guide. If you don't have a Bible guide, don't worry. We'll tell you how to get one in a moment. But we're going to teach on this in five minutes, and then we're going to be talking about this in 20 minutes' time. So make sure you make time for us, and let's study. Psalm 65 Praise is awaiting you, O God, in Zion, and to you the vow shall be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, you will provide atonement for them. Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you, that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, of your holy temple. By awesome deeds in righteousness you will answer us, O God of our salvation, you who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and of the far-off seas, who established the mountains by his strength, being clothed with power. You who still the noise of the seas, the noise of their waves, and the tumult of the peoples. They also who dwell in the farthest parts are afraid of your signs. You make the outgoings of the morning and evening rejoice. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its ridges abundantly, you settle its furrows. You make it soft with showers. You bless its growth. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths drip with abundance. They drop on the pastures of the wilderness, and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks. The valleys also are covered with grain. They shout for joy. They also sing. Psalm 65. Psalm 65, 66, 67, 68 is what we continue to read as we go through the book. It is great. The very last verse in the whole book of Psalms says this, Psalm 150. It says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's Psalm 150, verse 6. That's at the end of this book. Now we're commanded in the word of God, that is the Bible, to praise the Lord. And when we do pray, do we pray that? Do we praise the Lord with our lives? When we talk, do we praise the Lord? The action of giving our praise to the Lord is critical in the life of a Christ follower or a Christian. Our lives begin to change when we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts and follow him as the Lord and the Savior of our life. The best way that we can identify someone who is a Christian is to watch them live. When we see the evidence of their praise, we see Jesus Christ working in this world. The enemy of our soul doesn't want to see this demonstrated, so he creates distractions and troubles to bog us down and to get us in the darkness of sin. But as Christians, we know that God is the Lord over all. Psalm 65 is written to praise God for his salvation and to praise God for his wisdom. Now, that's amazing. Think about that. Psalm 65 is designed to praise God. 
And we're going to study that today. Take your Bible guide and turn to today's passage. And let me tell you that you can, if you don't have one, why not? I mean, come on. You can write to us or call us and get one, or you can go to Bible Discovery TV and uh, click on it. It'll take you to a page where you can download it. And you're literally seconds away from joining us as we continue on this journey through the Bible. This is very important. And let's focus on this today as we talk about praising God, because it's there's not a lot of discussion about this. There's a lot of discussion about the problems in the world, but there's not a lot of discussion about praising God. And we need to praise God always. In fact, it said, you know, Peter said, whatever, th- or Paul said, whatever things are pure, whatever things are right, whatever things are good, if there's any virtue, any praise, praise the Lord. So we need to keep that in our hearts and our minds as believers. And Father, I pray today as we focus on praising your name, praising who you are, thanking you, Lord, for everything you've done. Help us to hear you. I pray, Lord, that we would listen and that we would get our attention off the news and get our attention back on your word. (laughs) Help us, Lord. This is what we pray. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's look at this because this is a great passage. Psalm 65 verse 1 says, praise is awaiting you. I love that. Praise is awaiting you, O God, in Zion. And to you the vow shall be performed. I love verse 1. O you who hear prayer, to you all flesh will come. Now look at that. To you all flesh will come. Iniquities prevail against me. As for our transgressions, you will provide atonement for them. And you did through Jesus Christ. Blessed is the man you choose and cause to approach you that he may dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, of your holy temple. Oh, this is good. When we praise God, we recognize his divine mind and his provision. Our best life is not right now, beloved but it is yet to come. Our best life is yet to come. Now, did you see in the last scripture some of the references there subtly to Jesus Christ? Did you understand that? God is speaking to us, beloved. We need to hear that. We need to praise the Lord for what he's done. If you're a Christian and you've given your life to Jesus Christ, I'll meet you at about 30,000 years on the south side of Jerusalem, okay? And I'm serious when I say that because we're going to live forever. Praise God. Let that sink in a little bit. Because we'll do that. Psalm 65, verse 5. By awesome deeds in righteousness, you will answer us. O God of our salvation, you who are confident, you who are the confidence of all the ends of the earth and all and, and of the far off seas, who established the mountains by his strength, being clothed with power. What? Being clothed with power. You who still the noise of the seas. What? The noise of their waves. What? The tumult of the peoples. Oh my goodness. They also who dwell in the furthest parts are afraid of your sign. You make the outgoings of the morning and the evening rejoice. Oh, this is amazing. God commands the laws that govern everything in in existence. We depend on the faithfulness of God for all things. Paul Davies, a, a great scientist down in Arizona, says it this way. We depend in science on the laws of nature. And somebody has to control those laws of nature. (laughs) Very, very interesting. I don't know. I'm just saying it. Yeah, absolutely. And so God is in control of everything, even though we rebel and our governments do crazy things and we do crazy things. We need to repent and change things around. Still, if we come back, God has a measure of forgiveness for us that is unyielded. If we take it, come to Jesus today, take his forgiveness. Psalm 65, verse nine, here it is. You visit the earth and you water it. 
You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its ridges abundantly. You settle its furrows. You make it soft with showers. You bless its growth. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths drip with abundance. They drop on the pastures of the wilderness and the little hills rejoice on every side. The pastures are clothed with flocks and the valleys are covered with grain. They shout for joy and they also sing. What a beautiful psalm that is. God controls the provisions of the earth and sky. Not Mother Nature. <laughs> it's God. We should live our lives under the covering and the provision of the Lord. Now, I just want to say, God controls everything. And we have to understand that there are things going wrong in this earth because of sin. But as we come back to the Lord, give our lives to him, then suddenly things begin to shift and change around. We need to do that again. All of us do. So, Father, today we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, we agree together. You would help our families. I'm talking to Christians. You would help our friends come to know you. And Lord, if there are people watching today who don't know you, I pray, Father, your Holy Spirit would come on them and you would forgive them of their sins and help them, Lord, as you change their life. In the name of Jesus Christ, and we said together, amen. But a lie is when somebody tells you, I know how you'll be happy. You buy this hairspray and you're going to be happy. You smell like this flower, you're going to be happy. You take this drug, you're going to be happy. You buy this car, you're going to be happy. See, it all tells me I'm going to be happy. No, I'm not. That's not how this works. The truth is that I am not happy until I find the purpose of why I exist. My purpose for living. Well, it's time now to carry on with our Bible study. And you know, we're almost halfway through the book of Psalms, and I haven't yet done a specific study on the life of the main contributor to the Psalms, and that is King David. So I'm going to do that today, and we're going to look at his life and his career. He was a king, warrior, poet, and yes, even a prophet. Check it out. No one in the entire Bible is as well known about as King David, even Jesus Christ. This is because no other biblical biography is so complete, as it spans virtually his entire life, from boyhood to death. His name occurs over a thousand times in the Bible, including 53 times in the New Testament. The story of David and his bloodline is also featured in six books of the Old Testament. David was a warrior king, musician, and poet. In fact, he is the principal poet of the Psalms. Interestingly, there is only scarce mention of music for worship in the public life of Israel prior to David. Music as worship and the Psalms as a genre of song and poetry are part of the legacy left by David. Also, the hereditary bloodline of King David will become the only legitimate royal bloodline in Jewish history. From him will come all the future kings of Judah and ultimately the Messiah. We first meet David in 1 Samuel 16. He is a ruddy, bright-eyed, good-looking shepherd boy, but the youngest of Jesse's sons and an unlikely candidate for Israel's second king. In fact, David was not even fully Jewish, since his great-grandmother Ruth came from Jordan. However, God was not interested in David's outward appearance, but in his heart. Indeed, the Lord himself described David as a man after mine own heart. Before becoming king, David would first serve as King Saul's armor-bearer and musician. Saul was greatly troubled by a distressing spirit from the Lord, and it would only leave him when David would play his harp. Interestingly, the great psalm scroll, found among the Dead Sea Scrolls, credits David with writing four songs for charming the demon-possessed with music. Additionally, according to Jewish lore, David as well as his son Solomon were skilled exorcists. David would go on to defeat the arrogant Philistine champion Goliath and eventually be crowned king. As king, he united the Hebrew tribes into one nation, with Jerusalem as the capital city, and defeated many enemy nations. Though David was a great king, he was by no means a perfect one. 
2 Samuel 11 records his unfortunate affair with Bathsheba and the subsequent murder of her husband Uriah. Though he later repented, the consequences of his sin would manifest in a great deal of family tragedy. Although David sinned on a number of occasions, his heart was always open to God's correction and was sincerely repentant. He did not presume God's mercy, but instead considered how he had offended God and returned to right paths. He was counted as righteous, and Jesus also held him in high regard and often recited his psalms. Truly, David was a man after God's own heart and should ultimately be regarded as a biblical hero. So although King David wasn't a perfect man, he foresaw a man who would be a God-man. And David writes and prophesies about this Messiah many times in the Psalms. His name is Jesus, or Yeshua in Hebrew. He is God in the flesh, and he is the eternal heir of King David, who has the right to sit on his throne. And believe you me, he is coming back one day soon to do just that. So if Jesus isn't Lord of your life, then you need to do that today. Take the prophet Isaiah's advice. He says, Seek the Lord while he might be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. Yes, he will. And uh, it's so simple. You, you mention his name, Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMashiach. You, Yeshua HaMashiach, that's his name in Hebrew. And it's important for us to recognize that he died on the cross 2,000 years ago for us, gave his life. We, we crucified him, gave his life for us, but death could not hold him. He rose from the dead. And uh, it's amazing because he's fully God and fully man. Look, I, I don't know how it happens, but I know it was. And that's what the word of God says. So it's a very interesting thing. You call to him and say, Lord, I believe you. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. And I give my life to you. Help me, Lord. Help me. Because we are in a sin culture and we are sinners. But Lord, I want to change my ways. Help me in Jesus' name. And when you pray that prayer, God changes you. And as you are serious about it, which we're going to talk about here in a moment, but as you're serious about that, it keeps you slowly changing closer to God as you grow in life. Very good. All right, Corey, what's going on? Okay. I, I want to pose a couple questions to the to the table here and just see what we can go because I noticed in our assigned reading, uh, which of course was Psalm 65 to 68, in Psalm 66, the psalmist says something really interesting. I'm going to read you a few verses and then go back to the one I really want to zero in on. So Psalm 66 verses 16 to 20 says this, Come and hear all you who fear God. Let me tell you what he has done for me. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But God has surely listened and has heard my prayer. Praise be to God who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. Now, the question that I want to pose to everyone here comes from verse 18. If I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Uh, other English translations, uh, a common translation of if I had cherished sin in my heart is if I had regarded iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. So my first question is this, what do you think it means to cherish sin in your heart or to regard iniquity in your heart? What do you guys think? Hmm. I think it's to set up sin as, as a God in your life rather okay. than God himself. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're putting something before God and you're breaking, you know, the first two commandments there. So, I mean, because some, some we, we, well, we all love to sin mm -hmm. <laughs> as human, our human natures love to sin, mm -hmm. right? And so I think God calls us to be different from that mm -hmm. and to make him our God. So, I don't know. Right. Well, I think as we are introduced to who God is when we understand that God sent his son, that he gave his life willingly for us to pay the cost of our sin. Then if we give our lives to him, then we need to turn away from that. Mm. There is something that happens. We become a new creation in Christ Jesus. 
That means that we literally give God control over what we think and what we do. Are we perfect people? Absolutely not. We are a work in progress. God is the author and the finisher of our faith, but that means that we can't cherish those things that are in us that we know God does not approve of. Mm. That's what it means to follow God, to follow the Lord. We need to know how to follow him because the things and the traditions that we have held are not necessarily the things that that God has called us to. And so if we hold those things higher than what God says, then I think that's cherishing or putting them in a higher position of God Mm -hmm. in our life. Okay, so I I, I think I hear what you guys are saying is is to have hold something in your heart as right or as good that God has said is not right is not good is that a fair mm-hmm. representation of what okay so then my next question is why would doing that stop God from listening to your prayer because he says if i had cherished sin in my heart the lord would not have listened so why why would cherishing sin stop God from listening to our prayers? If you break the first two commandments, which Ryan said earlier, that's the commandment of love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and don't make idols. Mm-hmm. The, you, you've, you've taken the sin, or sin is rebellion against God. Mm-hmm. You've taken the sin or the rebellion against God and you've made it something that's in your heart. Now, th- there's no way to determine whether somebody's cherishing it or not. Only they know right. and only God knows. Mm-hmm. So when you've done that, then there is a mixed message in your lifestyle, in your living. And you have to figure this out. When somebody comes to know the Lord, truly accepts the Lord, as the Lord of their life, none of that matters. You have to put whatever God has told you to put at the center of your life. And that's not easy. And you do that. Mm -hmm. What mom said or what Janice said was to cherish something. Now the word cherish is interesting because it means to love. And that's the word they used yeah, and for like hold as important. Right. Yeah. The to, Greek word. To kind of harbor, to foster it in there. Yeah. yeah. So there are sins that we have grown accustomed to and we've cherished them in our life and mm-hmm. we've made decisions. Mm-hmm. We're going to keep it. How can you make decisions to follow God? How can you make decisions to love the Lord? How can you make decisions to hear from God? when you're cherishing that sin. That's what keeps us from God. That's why God can't listen to us because we're we're cherishing something that is not his. So so it's like an Adam and Eve situation where where their decision to not trust God's morality, but to kind of justify it and to to go ahead and eat of the fruit, to reject God's morality because God said, you know, don't do it. And they did it. And that rebellion that they chose meant that God could not keep them in his presence. Mm-hmm. So then if we choose rebellion, if we hold on to our sin, if we hold on to our rebellion, then it's a similar case where God can't listen to us. He can't, he can't answer our prayers in that way because of what we're harboring, because of what we're choosing to prioritize. Rebellion is a subtle thing. Mm-hmm. It is not something obvious. You know, you can't see rebellion. I mean, you can see rebellion Sometimes, and war, right. oh, yeah. but it's something that is very hard to identify in ourselves. Okay, so with that in mind, then, with that being hard to identify, then how do we stop ourselves from doing this? Like, what should we, what's the remedy to this? Like, what do we put in our hearts? What do we cherish in our hearts? so that we can ensure that we're not cherishing sin. Well, it's dad used to say a lot and still does, whatever you feed more grows more, right? Mm-hmm. So if I indulge the flesh, mm-hmm. then that's gonna continue to grow. Mm-hmm. But if I starve the flesh and I fill the spirit through the word of God and through prayer, mm-hmm. then that's what grows more. And so that's, I mean, I think that's the first step mm-hmm. to starting that. Yeah, I think to justifying, making excuse always, mm. right? Is a big thing. Well, you know, 
God wants me to be happy, yeah. doesn't he? You know, and so and this is just the way I am. And so God will love me, mm-hmm. you know, using God's grace uh, as an excuse to live the way we want, I think is a very dangerous thing. And, you know, it's easy for us to do if we if we are, aren't doing that, really seeing who God is in our life mm-hmm. and making that commitment and really is a daily commitment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and there are choices. There are some things that we are not going to choose right on, but we need to have that open and honest heart with God all yeah. the time. Right? I, that makes me think of, you know, we've been talking over the last couple of days. I know Ryan, especially too, the difference between Saul and David. And it's what you're saying where David definitely wasn't perfect, but what he did is when he was confronted with his sin, he confessed it. He mm-hmm. said, I have sinned, yes. Whereas Saul, you see him justifying. When you go back into some of those verses, he goes, well, I was afraid of the men. So that's why I did it. Yeah, I did it, but I was afraid of the men. And David's like, no, I was wrong and I have sinned against you. So that idea of confession. And also it makes me think of Psalm 119 verse 11 that says, your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. We need to be confronted by the word of God so that we understand the morality of God. So let's pour out our hearts before God and be clean before him. A Roku box is great. You buy them at Walmart for like 39 to 79 bucks, put it on your TV set, takes the Wi-Fi and makes it into television. And on the Roku box, if you look up BD Family and Friends, BD Family and Friends, and you search for it, you'll get our station. 24-7 linear streaming channel and all the programs. Join us, won't you? Today we pray, Lord, I desire to put myself and everything that I do under your provision. Help me today. 